Yeah, this is the social on Talk Sport 2. Harry Kane, we believe, is going to fly to Munich later today to get a medical to join Bayern Munich. Rory Jennings alongside me is unconvinced. You still don't think he's going, do you? You still no, don't think he's going. But I also concede that this is just m- this is me. <laughs> this is an issue that I can't process. I cannot see a world in which Harry Kane leads a line for Bayern Munich. I think Harry Kane is totally capable. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a, I think he's oh, a sensational player. Of course he is. He player. could play for anyone, couldn't yeah, he? he could play for yeah. anyone in the world. And he improves any front line in the world. There is no doubt about it. But when you think about what Harry Kane needs out of football, when you think about what he's hoping for, I just don't know that Bayern Munich scratch the itch. I really, I really don't. Because the other thing that I don't think many people are thinking about at the moment, right? Harry Kane is potentially going to leave Tottenham. Yeah. And it's something that he's flirted with. It's something that he's processed and considered for an awful long time. And it's nearly happened on many other occasions. I sometimes think that this could be the moment where he he kind of second guesses it only because finally Tottenham have a progressive manager, a manager who is inclined to attack rather than Kane being partnered with managers who are predetermined to defend. Mourinho, Nuno Espirito Santo, um, Antonio Conte, yeah. three of the most naturally defensive-minded managers in world football. Mm. Suddenly, do you know what it's a bit like? You know the day that you get your hair cut? Yeah. You look in the mirror, you go, I don't need to get my hair cut, do I? It looks yeah, good. Oh, it's bang on. It looks good to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think suddenly he's gone, hang on a minute, the, the club I'm at, <laughs> the club I'm at, they look all right today because... We have a manager. I don't need a short back us. inside of Munich. I don't, do I need to leave? Like I need when I needed to leave, when he desperately needed to leave, is when Tottenham wouldn't sell him. Do you remember when Harry Kane was with Gary Neville? He was on the golf course in those yeah. rather fetching cream trousers. That is when he desperately needed to leave. Yeah. And that's when he was linked with Manchester City, and then they went and got Erling Haaland, and that was the end of that dream. Was, uh, I still think that it is the right move for him in the sense that he's you know mainly because he's getting away with Spurs I don't agree with you that it's this kind of new dawn for Tottenham I just don't you look at their squad it hasn't massively improved yes they brought in Madison that's a good signing but but with the money with the money Ollie for for, say say and look this Tottenham Tottenham have given us no inclination or given us they haven't given us any data over over recent years in the way that they spend money that they'll spend this money correctly but let's just imagine Life post Kane and they spend the money correctly. So let's say that they go out and they reinvest that money plus a bit more. But they wouldn't have it if he stayed, would they? No, if he's if he's look, I still think they should spend the money. I still think they should find the money. And let's remember, we're always we always say that they need to sell to buy. They don't. Mm. Tottenham are an incredibly wealthy club. Joe Lewis mm. is incredibly wealthy. You know, Daniel Levy chooses to be rather miserly with the purse strings. But the money is there for Tottenham. They're an incredibly successful. When I say successful, I mean away from football I mean in terms of the way they generate money yeah. you know Beyonce was there and all that like, they have the money <laughs> but let's say that they that Kane goes and they use the money correctly mm-hmm. all of a sudden they reimagine themselves in their squad with Conor Gallagher Dougie Luis out of Villa yeah maybe Romelu Lukaku something like that all yeah. of a sudden imagine if they win a trophy this season well, and he's do gone you know, do you know what it would almost it would be so sod's law that that would happen yeah. do you know what it would be just like do you remember when Michael Owen left Liverpool to win the European Cup? And then he they left, won it. He went to Real Madrid to win the European <laughs> Cup. I have to win. I know, you know, I'm one of the best players in the world. I'm a, I'm a Ballon d'Or and all that. I need to go and win a European Cup. Where are you going? I'm going to Madrid. They always win it. Okay, great. Off he goes. Suddenly, the team that he leaves win it in the most glorious, like memorable fashion yeah. that they possibly could have done. And he was no part. And of he's it. no part of it. No, no. I mean, it almost definitely happens, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It, uh, that could happen with Spurs this season. They don't have mm. any European competitions. Do you think to worry about? that he? goes do you think that Harry Kane is leading the line for Bayern Munich yes absolutely mainly because of the news we got today that he's literally getting on a flight there do you reckon he's going to get on a flight that he thinks is going to Munich and it says MNC and he's like oh yeah he's got, he's got his bags and like everything like that he's all packed up ready to go ends up in Manchester signs for Man United because it's because it's MNC <laughs> I, I think he would rather play for Manchester United I think you're right but I still think that he 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 just needs to get out on Spurs. I if think you, that's the problem. If you're Eric Ten Hag here, are you not watching this situation? Looking at the amount of money that has been agreed between the two principal clubs here. So mm. so Tottenham have agreed that Harry Kane can leave for we'll find out the true value, but for whatever that that amount is. Yeah, so they're saying hundred million at the moment. Right. But, okay. Yeah. So if you're Eric Ten Hag there, do you not go look? If we put that bid in now. Harry Kane then says, 
I'm not going there. I'm not going to Munich. I will go to Manchester United. I feel like Tottenham would then be in a position where they have no option but to accept the bid from Manchester United. We know Levy doesn't... doesn't want to do that. Yeah. We know that he doesn't want to sell to an English club. Mm. But, if but they'd have it, to. They'd have to. They'd have they? to in that, in that circumstance. They would have to. Yeah. And I... I'm probably wrong. I'm definitely back in the minority here. I'm definitely not back in the favourite. But I kind of still think there is a world where that happens. Really? Yes. Really? Even right now? Even right now? If you think about what Manchester United are lacking at the moment, yeah. you know, they've signed Hoyland, which is clearly an interesting signing, mm. one for the future. A mm. lot of money, though. A lot of money, but that's that's life now, mate. Yeah. Like, that's, mm. like, Caicedo's played 40 Premier League games and he's worth over £110 million. <laughs> like, that's life. Yeah. So, actually, 70... Is all right. When you're buying potential and all of that. Yeah, it's a bargain, yeah. Well, I just think that we need to almost redefine what we consider to be normal normal rates yeah, now. Very true, yeah. Like, there's no such thing now as a £25 million footballer. Like, if you're a Premier League footballer, the days of signing... You know, 20 million, 25 million, which used to be dear. Yeah. Do you remember when 10 million was a lot? Yeah. yeah actually, well, do you remember the 15, Shearer? Yeah, 15 for Shearer, yeah. Like, that, that was like, that, that was record. the moment. Well, the, the other thing that I remember, this is when I, this is when I was at, uh, I was doing my GCSEs. I remember Roy Keane earned 50 grand a week. And I just remember, I just remember my mum going, "What is wrong with for fifty grand a week?" That was. Like, I bet you did no revision after that. You were just out playing footy. Yeah, yeah. I've got to be a footballer now. Yeah, I'm terrible, but I'm, that's why I'm still trying. Um, but no, I, look, I just don't see a world where Kane, everything that Kane is, everything that he wants out of football, everything that he needs. You know this this trophy drought. Does winning the Bundesliga? Does guiding? Does guiding? by Munich to their 13th Bundesliga in a row mm. ultimately there, work do you know what there's, al- there's already reports that he wants to start in the Super Cup which is uh, presumably like yeah yeah it's like weekend, this weekend yeah just to get a trophy how good I mean, would that be just to get a trophy <laughs> oh I've got one oh great yeah come back <laughs> cheers yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then no, he's gone look, back to Spurs yeah I just, I just look the reason why it could work for Kane is because Thomas Tuchel is an excellent manager who has pedigree in the European Cup mm. Harry Kane if he were to win a European Cup, this whole move is suddenly worthwhile. And any doubt, any non-conformist to the Kane project or Kane, uh, Kane's ability would have to, you know, really rein it in. I just don't know that this is it. Because, pr- look, they may win the European Cup. They may come to Wembley and win it. They've won it at Wembley before. But realistically, they don't win it, do they? No. So no, they th- don't, no. I so don't they, think... don't win, they don't win the Champions League. And therefore... It's the Bundesliga, maybe the odd yeah. German Cup. The thing is, though, Roy, what, just get a few under your belt. I don't think he's going to end his career there, is he? Let, in fact, let's hear from um, Thomas Tuchel, by the way, because you just mentioned him there. He has been talking about the situation. Uh, here's what he had to say. I confirmed that we are working uh, like with highest pressure and highest, uh, and highest focus and highest priority on to, to sign Harry Kane. This is the situation. This I, I confirmed it. And this shows... The, the importance. I mean, we are trying to get the captain of the English national team out of England, out of Premier League, and that says it all. So it's a, it's a huge deal that we are working on. It's a huge signature that we are working on, but it's still in the process. And um, as long as nothing is confirmed and no decision is done, it's not a subject for, for the coach to talk about. Mm, he wants his man, doesn't he? But as he says, it's not confirmed yet. Rory still uh, don't think that you still don't think it's going to happen. Uh, let's hear from uh, Ange Postecoglou as well, actually, Rory, because uh, he's been speaking about Tottenham and, and their chance to kind of move on from Kane. Fair to say, I, I don't have a blow by blow account of the whole thing, but uh, my understanding is that it's uh, you know it's it's progressed to the point where it looks like it's going to happen, and that's kind of. Uh, um, that's all the information I kind of have at the moment, and and from that perspective, it at least gives us sort of some clarity. Um, unless something unforeseen happens, that we we move forward without Harry. How do you think he's feeling at the moment? He must. I mean, there must be a bit of relief there for him <laughs> that it's finally done. But also, that I mean, this is just stretched out so long. It must have been so tough for him to prepare. Yeah, I and think, he's just lost his best player just before the season starts. I think ultimately he's been he's been done a mischief by this entire saga. Yeah. I think if it, whatever the outcome of this, it needed to be done 3 weeks ago at the very at the very latest. Mm. I do feel a bit sorry for Postecoglou because he's been to pre-season, he's had a bit of a a weird pre-season, you know, they got beaten by West Ham then they had a game called Eyes oh, a bit odd. Mm. And presumably he was building a team to 
incorporate Harry Kane. And now the Tottenham job with Harry Kane is a very different job to the Tottenham job without Harry Kane. So the job has effectively changed the day before the season starts for them, or two days before the season starts for them. Very difficult. You know, it's yeah. a shame for him. Um, but I imagine that he's a resourceful chap. I also imagine that he, you know, he is fairly intelligent. So presumably he could deduce that the writing was on the wall for Kane. Yeah. You know, we all knew. Yeah. So maybe he was proceeding as if he were leaving anyway. Mm. But um, yes, I imagine that he is just desperate for it to be over. But the word that you used, oh, you used the word relief. Mm. I, I don't think I can agree with that usage of the word. But simply because losing a player, regardless of how much ag they cause you, right? regardless of how difficult the relationship is, you're Tottenham, you can't lose Kane. Like yeah. whatever, you know, like let's let's just take this to the fundamentals of football. That geezer scores you 30 goals and it makes you another 20. Mm. Of course you can't lose him. Of yeah. course you can't. So so there is no way, there is no discernible way that Postacoglu can go, do you know what? That's good news. Like you, can't, you just can't. <laughs> I, I understand that there's an edge. I understand that there's an angle where you go, okay, Kane's gone and therefore we can proceed. Therefore we can yeah. reinvest. At therefore least he it's knows good it, news. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. He's got a clear path But ultimately, now. the bottom line is... Yeah you're losing the best player that you've ever had. Yeah. Or arguably, or certainly of a Premier League era. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.